All right. Thanks for joining me. All right. This is Mitch Bailey. And uh, yes, this is Air Heroes and Bailey's Heating and Air. Um, so, you know, our, our, log, our uh, uh, motto is comfort to the rescue. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been doing this for 41 years. I, I want to kind of go over a typical house we did just recently because a lot of people don't understand all that's involved to do it actually correctly. I mean, anybody can change out equipment. Anybody can replace duct work. But to actually do what you're supposed to do to measure in and measure out, that's, that's a whole different animal. That's actual performance, uh, doing performance systems and not just, just changing out systems. So uh, let's do this one. This is a, a, a study in efficiency and comfort. This is a house that we did in September. Uh, it was just a few weeks ago. We finished the job. And I, I think you guys will understand pretty much what we do and how we do it uh, in any any contractor HVAC contractor can do this they just have to spend the time and yes it costs a little bit more to do this but it's done right you don't have to mess with it again if you do it the correct way uh, the problem is a lot of guys just they just don't do it so here let's get started on it so this is the house this is in Modesto uh, house it's an older home it's uh, it's up there in age and uh, we had an old unit on the roof it was a package unit. It had been changed out once before. This was a newer unit. It had been changed out once before. Um, and uh, when they changed it, you can see the mastic on the roof. Uh, you can see where they, they've had leaks, so they've come in here and mastic stuff. But all around the unit here, they also had mastic up here because they'd had some roof leaks. So when we're changing this out, we change out the uh, the roof curb and everything. And that that's going to improve that portion of it. They won't have any roof leaks when we're done. Uh, it should be good until they replace the roof and then um, they put a new roof on. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, it was owned by Gary R. And I won't give his last name, but it's a rental property that he owned. He actually lives on the other side of the property. And it was a 1,638 square foot house. The um, the house had a uh, large, uh, uh, it was built in 1978. And it has an existing three and a half ton rooftop package unit. So. The unit on the roof is a three and a half tons. We don't know if that's the right size, uh, but I'll get to that in a second. We had double pane aluminum windows, which were original to the home. Um, 1978, that was pretty much standard uh, on a subdivision house. It has a slab floor. We have R13 in the walls um, for insulation. It was a stucco exterior. We had R19 in the attic, and it was uh, blown in, but it was uh, the cellulose insulation. So. Um, it was not in great shape, but it all needed to be replaced. Uh, so we'll get to that in a second. And it had cathedral ceilings in about half the house. And, and the uh, living spaces, they had cathedral. And then the sleeping spaces, they had uh, eight foot uh, plate. Uh, and the cathedral ceiling probably brought the volume of the, of the house up to about nine and a half feet on the volume. So it'd be like having a nine and a half foot ceiling throughout the home. Okay. So the problems with the current system, and uh, we talked to the tenant, and the tenant said that it, it never gets below 67, 76 in the house when he's got it on set. He's got it run all day long to get to 76 in the house, and it really never gets below that. He's got both bathrooms that he has in the house. It's a, got two bathrooms in the house, are freezing while the rest of the home is hot, and high energy bills in excess of $250 in the summer. So his energy bills are costing him you know, $250 plus every month. Um, and that's that's quite a bit of an expense and it seems like there's a lot of dust in the home so the lights also flicker when the unit comes on that's a good indication that the unit's getting fairly hard to start the compressor may be going out um, and uh, that's something we address here in a second too okay so uh, Gary contracted for us to measure the home we we're going to perform a load calculation and we're going to make sure that that load calculation will tell us if the equipment's the right size we're also going to do, do a duct design on the duct work. We're going to design the new duct work because we're, we're going to replace it. We're going to test the duct leakage prior to our work. So we're going to see how much actually leaks, the system leaks air before we start. And then we're going to test everything out when we're done. We're going to remove the existing elbow and roof curb, replace the unit with a 14 seer standard. Now some guys say, well, why don't you use 16? 16 is available. Uh, 16 takes a pretty good price jump. And I would rather see the customer spend the money on something that actually do more bang for the buck like replacing the ductwork in this house. So the money that would go toward to 16 sear we put instead toward a 14 sear piece of equipment and take that 16 sear price and add it and helps deduct the the value makes the value more for that ductwork so we actually get bigger bang for our buck. We're going to replace the roof curb uh, because of the leaks that was that was obvious when we were up there. 
We're going to replace the ductwork with R8 flexible ductwork and insulate the attic to R44. So we're going to add insulation because that was R19 is really not sufficient for this area. You should be anywhere from, to at least R44 up to R60. Anything above R60 is just a waste of, of insulation. It doesn't get you any bang for the buck. Uh, we're going to install a new thermostat and we're going to replace the disconnect in the breaker. That might help on the uh, flickering of the lights because that could have been part of the issue if that stuff gets old. So the, uh, we do a measurement in. So the, this measurement report, we use Testo uh, digital psychrometers to uh, read the uh, enthalpies inside the, that the unit was producing. And we take those enthalpies, and the, the nice part about these Testos is uh, you put one in return, you put one in the supply, and you tell it how much airflow the house has. And if you can see, if you see here, down here we have 1150 CFM, and we have 30,000 uh, BTUs being produced. The, the testos will actually do the calculation for you off of uh, the humidity or the uh, enthalpy in the house and it'll tell you how many BTUs this unit's producing. So this unit is supposed to be a three and a half ton. It's only producing 11, uh, 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 two and a half tons of cooling though and it's supposed to be 1400 CFM and we're only getting 1150. So that's probably due to the duct leakage so we'll get to that here in a second. So 1150, and uh, which is really less than a three ton, and they're paying for a three and a half, and it's 30,000 BTUs, which is really a two and a half ton. Uh, we test in the ductwork and the system, and uh, so here's the here's what we came up with. So it's three and a half ton, should be 1400, and we're only measuring 1150 CFM. We're getting only 82% of capacity, so that's 82% of what it should be. Uh, should be 42,000 BTUs being produced, and we're going to measure 30,000. So that's getting 72% of capacity. That's a lot to lose. We're losing a quarter of our energy is not getting into the house, basically. It's not producing the BTUs it's supposed to. We measure an air leakage of 239 CFM, and that means that 17% of the air is leaking up to the outside. Or, in this case, it could also be in the return leak. If it's a return leak, it's sucking in very hot attic air and we're having to cool that. That could be one of the reasons why we're getting 30,000 BTUs out of the system. So with the 239 CFM, 17% is the uh, higher than the standard. If I was just to replace the system, I'd have to seal it to 15. So he could have paid for somebody to come in here, replace the system, throw a little bit of duct mastic in, seal things up, got it down to 14%. But that's that doesn't do any benefit for the customer, you know. If you replace all the ductwork, we have to seal it to at least 5%. That's the bare minimum you have to hit. You, you cannot get any, can't be any more than 5%. So we got to get less than that. So the replacing the ductwork was a bigger bang than going to a 16 sear. That's, that's why I really, a lot of times people think, you know, I really got to go with the highest efficiency equipment. No, no, don't spend the money on, on the, the big, the big fancy unit. Spend the money on improving your airflow in your house, uh, improving the ductwork. That will pay for itself, and it actually will give you more comfort. You'll be more comfortable. So let's go on and take a look at what else goes on here. So what I do is when I when I go out there and I do the measurements, I also measure the house up. I measure the house up. I draw it on a piece of uh, paper, and I bring it back to the shop. And I use WriteSoft. WriteSoft is excellent software. We can draw in the house in the computer. It's a uh, pretty quick drag and drop kind of thing and we drag and drop the, the rooms in I specify ahead of time what the walls are made of what the ceilings made of what the floor is what the windows are and it calculates all that automatically I don't have to come back and 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 uh, I have to do it manually when you do this manually uh, if I had to do a manual uh, load calculation it would actually probably take me about eight hours to do uh, in real time, I could probably do this. It takes me about 30 minutes to measure up the house and about another hour to hour and a half to put in a computer and get my duct design and everything done. So we put it in a computer, and then it also tells you what the size is. So the load calculation shows the equipment was sized correctly. They did, it didn't th uh, need a 3.5 ton. As you can see down here, it says it's 3.6 tons, so 3.5 tons adequate size. Now, if you notice here, it says sensible heat ratio, SHR, and it's 0 .70. This is a fudge factor. If we put in the exact size of the equipment, because the calculation is done for mostly the average day, on a really hot day, we'd be having a real hard time keeping up with the system. So what we do is we use the 0.70, and this is the default in Wright's office 0.70, as a fudge factor so that we oversize equipment slightly so that it, it does it. But, but this one was sized pretty close. We have 3.5 tons, 3.6. Now, if they change their windows out, we could probably get this down to 3 tons of cooling, no problem. 
and uh, the windows is part of the issue on this the insulation we're already doing so if you look at this we just all this is is you divide 0.70 into the 30,000 and you come up with like 43,000 BTUs which is like 3.6 tons and that's why it says 3.6 um, it you can change this in right soft if you have this house is built in 78 so we would use 0.70 just as a fudge factor because of the construction back then it's not the greatest if the house was built in like say 2006 2007 I you could you could change this default from 0 0.70 to say 0 0.8 0 0.75 and this will reduce the size of the of the fudge factor because the house has a better construction so you don't have to use this fudge factor but the load calculations show that 3.6 tons was was uh, just uh, right for it so here's how uh, the house looks after we've drawn it up and I've zoomed in on it and I, I've laid out my ductwork now the locations of register stayed the same and actually the, the only register that actually changed size was uh, this register here in the living room and the register here in the uh, uh, family room they had to get a little bigger they had to go to 14 by 8 everything else stayed the same size we used everything was replaced though new boxes new flex new wise new collars you know new uh, roof curb all that stuff so everything in this was new same thing with the return air it was a 20 by 30 uh or 20 by 25 so we changed it to a 20 by 30 we we enlarged it and we uh if you look at right soft here too you see how the this is the flex duct there's a y here this is the box these actually uh will show up in right soft if you uh you can specify the actual type of box and it figures all my duct work up for me basically all i do is drag and drop a line and then put another one for a supply duct and it sizes it automatically so it tells me this duct needs to be an eight and this one needs to be a six and this needs to be a nine nine eight six nine seven seven nine four and it gives me all these sizes 20 inch for the return so i don't actually have to go in and 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 do that manually otherwise it would take like again probably add another hour and a half two hours to doing a load calculation and doing the duct design to do that so um it's uh, this is the the great part about uh, RightSoft is it, it it makes it very easy to design a system and to do it correctly. You don't have to if if you put all your inputs right and everything's good, then you'll come up with an and and part of that too is like in this family room, uh, there's a TV in here and they've got a game system and everything else. So in the family room, we add those extra loads in when we do it, and we also put like three people in the in the living room because uh, it's a three bedroom house. So we put three people in there because they'll be in there watching TV and the TV will be going, maybe playing a game and three people. They produce a, a lot. So this this room they actually took 341 and it also was cathedral. This cathedral ceiling, this is cathedral ceiling, this is cathedral ceiling. This was a flat ceiling in the kitchen area. But other than that, the rest of it was cathedral. So the the, the calculation, the right soft will calculate all that automatically. I don't have to do much. It's, I can save a ton of time. This also makes it less expensive for you as a customer because I can come in and do a, a load calculation very quickly. I can't do them in the field. We got to do them here at the shop. Uh, but it, it, I could do one in about an hour to hour and a half with my drawing. So it's about two hour time uh, turnaround for one. Okay. So after we did the load calculation, if you notice, you'll notice that it gives me the CFM. So it tells me how much air each of these rooms have to get. This master bedroom was 64, 239 for the master, master uh, bedroom, master bath was 64. Bathroom here was four CFM. 117 in the bedroom two, 147, 395. So all these, all this airflow that we're actually, uh, it tells me exactly what I need to. When we do the duct work, we put volume dampers inside each of the supply ducts so that we can tweak the duct uh, airflow and balance the system so we're pushing air where we need it and taking away air where we don't need it, where there's too much air coming out so we can balance it. If anybody who's doing any, replacing any duct work in a house they need to be putting volume dampers in, and they need to be doing load calculations, coming up with something like this. And we take our flow hood, we measure the airflow, and yes, that that that'll give you exactly what you need, so that, so that your how those rooms are comfortable and like where exactly where they're supposed to be. So, in fact, let me go back here. If you look at my uh, load calculation here, uh, you can see here that I've got this is how it shows the facing of the house and all that stuff. And these are like a sliding glass door and the windows are in here. That's all that's all plugged into the computer. It figures it all up automatically. Okay, so let's go back to the So we we go ahead and we did the uh we measured the airflow that was actually being produced. When we came out there and did that measure in, 
and this is how we came up with 1150 CFM. This this is the CFMs that were totaled in the system: 99 here, 135, 129. So, but if you look at it, that master b uh, bath they said it was cold. We're getting 99 CFM. It's 64 is what it's supposed to be. So we're getting way more air than we need to. Look at the master bedroom: 239 is what it's supposed to be. What are we getting? 135. That's that's not enough. That's not enough air. So this room's going to be hot compared. The master bedroom is going to be hot compared to the uh, the uh, um, master bath, which is going to be cold. This hall bath, we're supposed to be a 4 CFM at 129. That room was always cold. They almost had to leave the door open all the time just to just to keep the you know help cool the house because all the, a ton of air is being dumped in that bathroom. And if you if you're you know using that bathroom, you have the door shut. Man, you're gonna, you're gonna freeze to death in the summertime and in the wintertime. You're gonna you're gonna burn up because there's gonna be way too much air coming in there in the wintertime. So all these were off, and uh, so let me show you what 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 uh, the new unit looked like. So here here's our new unit on the roof. You know we've we've re roofed it in, uh, got rid of all that mastic, put new roofing down. Uh, we put some plywood down over here and re roofed this lower section. So they're not gonna have to worry about a leak this this is good for a, at least until they've replaced the roof they won't have any problems with leakage at all and you know nice new system compared to the old one um and then we come in and when we after we got it replaced we went in we tweaked the duct the guys balanced it when they were done and then they measured everything and put down whatever after the balance we're at so here we go let's look at this master bath 64 cfm was the design Originally had 99 coming out, now we're at 61, so we're right where we need to be. The master bedroom, 239 was the design. We're only getting 135 before, now we're getting 234. And we just go through, and you can see each one of these are, we try to hit within 10%. We don't chase our tail, though. If we're not, if we're a little more than 10, say we're 12 or 13, or a little less than 10, say 10 or 12%, I'm not going to, I don't, I tell my guys, don't chase. It's not going to matter that much. We try to be within 10%. If you're within 10%, you should be fine. And so almost all these are within their 10%. Some of them are right on um, 116 to 117. That's, that's you know, that's negligible. Uh, some are a little off, 130 to 147. But that 17 CFM is not going to matter a whole lot in the, in the overall of the system. So everything is balanced. Everything is working good. Uh, mass, or that hall bath, 4 CFM. Now we're only getting 11, and it was 129 before. So this bathroom is going to be just right. Temperature should be just right. So let's take a look at what uh, our actual percentages over and under we were. So this is the room. So we have the master bedroom, master bath, bath, bed two, bed two, bed one, family room, kitchen, dining room, living room. And as you can see, the blue is our design. So the blue line is where we should be CFM wise. And over here is the, the scale of the CFM. So zero to 450. But um, so we, we have you can see the blue the red is prior to doing replacing the ductwork this is what we were getting out of each of the system and the green is what uh, we are now what the the systems actually doing in the rooms measured so let's let's see what we were so the this one was 61 percent the uh, living room was only getting 61 percent of the air it's supposed to so yeah that that's a, a huge percentage you know that's 49 uh, percent I'm sorry, 39%, 39% um, of the air wasn't making it into that room. So we look at our green, we're, we're a lot closer now. We're very close. So let's take a look at uh, the next one was 61% for bedroom two. And then if we look at the family room, 57%. And if we look at the master bedroom, 56%. If we look at the bedroom one, 74%. Look at the kitchen, 81%. The dining room, 83%. Uh, and then we got over here in the master bath, 154% of the air that we actually should have been getting before. These are all prior to what they should have been. This is what the airflow was sh should have been. Look at the at that hall bathroom, 3,220%. So it's getting way, way too much air. And the people will try shutting the register off, and that's not how you do it. You got to do this with volume dampers, and you got to balance it. You got to balance the system. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the measurement report afterwards. So again, here we are, 1,421 CFM. Remember I said a 3.5 ton is supposed to be 1,400? Well, we're right where we need to be. 42,000 BTUs. That's, that's what a 3.5 ton is supposed to be, 42,000 BTUs. Uh, 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 12,000 BTUs per ton. Uh, 3.5 tons is just 42,000 BTUs. 
That's perfect. So we're doing what we're supposed to do. Um, okay, that's 1421 CFM, 42,000 BTUs. That's exactly what it's supposed to be delivering. Done a good job on this house in that respect. So let's take a look at uh, about the duct leakage here. So here we are. System had 239 before, and that's 17%. After we replaced the duct, we only had 54. So they'd sealed the duct work up. The leakage before was 17%. What's leakage afterwards? 3.9%. What, what I say the minimum is? 5% for new duct work. So we're actually a whole percentage point less than we need to be. And that's pretty good. Could we chase it, it and get it a little lower? Yeah, if you, if you wanted to spend a lot more time. But we we're way, way better than what it was. So let's go to the total improvements of 13% on the air, on the uh, air leakage. Plus, the new ducts are insulated R8, and they're buried, buried under the R44 insulation, so they got more R value to them. So in the hot summer, we got better insulation on them with because the, they're buried under the, the blown-in insulation. And in the wintertime, the same thing. We don't get the heat loss. So, so okay, what about the energy? And lo, we can measure, we can't measure SEER. And that, that unit was a 14 SEER. There's no way to measure the SEER rating. That's done with computer modeling. We just don't, there's no way we can go in there and measure it. But we can measure uh, the EER, the energy efficiency ratio. And the energy efficiency ratio is all you do is you take your old system B, you take your system BTUs and you divide it by the wattage. So our old system BTUs was 30,366 and we measured 4,324 watts. So EER equals BTUs per hour divided by the watts. And if we divided 30,366 by 4,324, we get 7 EER. So this unit was was doing about 7 ER, which at the time was probably was an 8 EER with a 10 SEER when it was built. But because of age and everything else, we're only really getting that kind of EER out of the 7. So 7 EER is not great. The new system's 42,000 BTUs. We measured the wattage at 2624. Now, I do have to say something. This 4324... It was a 90-plus day when we measured this one. The weather had cooled off, so this one was measured when it was about 80 degrees. So at 26, 24, this, this will go up a little bit, and we won't get as high in EER because uh, we'll get a little less BTUs out of the unit and a little more, e, uh, a little more wattage, so this will come down somewhat because this unit's rated at 11.5 EER at 14 SEER and um, almost 12. So... It, we were actually getting uh, a 16 C, uh, EER on this. 16 EER is, is pretty high, but that's because of the cooler weather. If we were to measure these two at this in the same temperature, if I was able to measure this at 90 and measure this one at 90, then the you would see probably this would be closer to 14 uh, EER because uh, the EER is really based on a 95 degree day, and we just didn't have 95 degree days on on both these days. So, um, the, but. This is an indication. You can see this is a, a lot better wattage. This is electricity. This is what you're paying for, 2624 as opposed to 4324. That's quite a bit of difference. All right. So I, you know, I appreciate you guys listening, and I just wanted to do this so you guys had a, a good idea of how you should do a system because, uh, you know, it, it's not, uh, it's not uh, how we actually do it. It's, it's that we can actually prove what we did is being delivered. I mean, when I install a system, I want to prove it. I want to make sure that you get uh, the cooling that you're paying for. I just don't want to swap out systems. And uh, sometimes we do because that's people just don't want to pay the money to do some of the extra testing and stuff and replace the ductwork. But, you know, this good example, uh, I wanted to show it to you so that you had an idea of how you're supposed to do it. And thanks for listening. I appreciate it.